And good afternoon, everyone. Glad you're here. Uh, I'm Ned Parks with uh, Aegis 360 Consulting. And um, actually, uh, we're doing a three-part mini-series. We're doing quite a lot of webinars right now. And this uh, three-part is specific to um, strategizing what you're doing in your business during COVID and, and after. Um, I had done this as a pop-up 30-minute webinar last week and frankly got so overwhelmed with a request for more about the topic that we actually had recorded it. We took that one down um, and then um, uh, we're, we're doing three parts now and they're each an hour long. So uh, there's the dates of, uh, of the upcoming uh, part two and part three and we'll explain a little bit in more detail what that's gonna look like. I'd like to get started with a quick question for you. Um, there's a poll that you have there. If you could, um, to answer that, it's anonymous. I won't know who's answering what. So uh, certainly, uh, so just jump on there and, and answer that. And if you're not a business owner, which is fine, you still have a department to run or you have your own job to do. Or you, This is a conversation that crosses over everybody. I don't care if you don't run the place. Um, we talk about a little bit from that perspective, but um, at the same time, I think it's really important that, uh, that um, we understand that even within uh, what we're doing within the organization, we can still have a plan and we can push for a plan if there's not one. So I'm a, I'm a big planner. I think it's important at one level or another to have a plan. So um, we've got, uh, looks like we got almost everybody has answered, maybe a, a one or two more. And then I'll end the polling and I'll share with you what we have. We've got basically a, a, a almost 50-50. We just had one other person. With, uh, so 54 of you said, 57% said there's no plan, and uh, 30, 43 or three, three of you said that there is a, there is a plan, and that's, that's good. I mean, that is, that's exactly what we need. We need to have that without question. So um, I, th this is a conversation that I think is important, and I, um, I can't stress it enough. Um, I'm, I'm very partial to Dwight Eisenhower, um, who said, uh, you know, plans are nothing, planning is everything. And, and you, you need to kind of, the first time I heard that, I had to think about it three or four times to really understand what he was talking about. Now, let's keep in mind that Dwight Eisenhower said this after D-Day. Um, he also uh, was, at the time anyway, had uh, orchestrated the largest logistical movement in the history of the world of any kind, military or otherwise. And um, for, for him to say, plans are nothing, planning is everything, really makes you stop and think a minute. Uh, now, he, what he went on to talk about was the fact that without a plan, there's not much you can change from or to. So we're going to kind of go down that road in a, in a lot more detail here in just a second. So this may be what you're feeling right now. If you're not feeling it at the moment, you probably were uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago now, where, wherever wherever you entered into this thing that we're at, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, let me get something straight with everybody on, the, on, on this, uh, on this uh, episode. This is not normal. This is not the new normal. We need to stop saying this is the new normal. Um, and, and it might sound like I'm parsing words with you a little bit or I'm playing games. There's nothing normal about what we're going through at the, at the moment. This is not the new normal, this is the new abnormal. And we need to fully embrace that and we need to use this language within our teams and within our, um, the people that we talk to. And, and let me tell you why I think that is so important. When we continue to say to ourselves, this is the new normal, what we're not doing is we're not looking forward to say, well, what are we gonna do um, moving forward? What are we gonna do tomorrow and the next day what are we gonna do when we have a vaccine and, and we can go out and sit at a bar and have a pizza and play golf and do all those things that we did in the, in the past? Is that gonna be the new normal? No, that's gonna be the old normal that we're reacquainted with. And if we continue to tell ourselves that this is the new normal, what we're doing is we're accepting where we are right now and we don't look at what tomorrow can be or should be or how we're going to pivot to it, right? And I, and I think that is absolutely critical. So this is not the new normal. This is the new abnormal. There's nothing normal about not being able to get in our cars and go to a restaurant. 
not in our society or any society in the world. And we're seeing that worldwide, right? I mean, the restaurants might look different, but, but that's normal. This is not normal. It's not normal to not be able to just call up and get a haircut. It's not normal to not be able to get an appointment with your doctor because the doctors are shut down. You can't go see the dentist. There's nothing normal about what we're doing here. And we've got to understand that and stop saying that this is the new normal. This is the new abnormal. And when we talk about the fact that it's the new abnormal, what then we, we do is we start to think about, okay, what are we gonna do different? Now, let's be clear, we've gotta manage the here and the now, and we're gonna talk about that. There's, there's no question about it, that that, that has to happen, and, and we're gonna talk about that. Uh, without a plan, there's no change, just chaos. And you're gonna see a lot of chaos out there. You're gonna see a lot of companies who are gonna be going through a ton of chaos trying to get back to the new normal again. They're gonna have as much trouble getting back to the new normal as they did getting to the abnormal because they didn't have a plan. And, and the thing to understand about a plan is a plan is a, is a direction. A plan is a, I know what, I, I, I know, I think, I know, I'm planning that the next step looks like this. And guess what, when I need to make a change, I know what I'm changing from and I know what I'm changing to. So let's go back and uh, football started last night, right? It was the draft, it was a very different draft, obviously. But what happens on a football field? They have a plan. How often does that plan shake out? Well, rarely, you know, a player gets injured, the other team does something you didn't plan on, you know, the weather was different, whatever. But what then they do is they're able to say, this was our plan and we're gonna make some adjustments. And they make those adjustments if they're a decent football team or any sport for that matter. Business is exactly the same. If you don't have a plan, you got nothing but chaos. Now, there's a plan gonna change. I'll guarantee you the plan's gonna change. I'll promise you the plan is gonna change. I'll, I'll lay money on the table that the plan's gonna change, especially with this. But if you don't have a, a plan, all you are going to end up with is chaos. And we experienced that because we didn't have a plan coming into the abnormal. Well, who would have, right? I mean, large companies do contingency planning, but their contingency planning is very isolated. So, you know, a large company will say, well, what happens if there's a rolling blackout in California and those two offices shut down? Well, then we'll shift operations to Akron or to, to wherever. But guess what? Everything shut down. So, you know, every, everybody got caught off guard everybody got caught off guard by this. So, so we had a lot of chaos. We're still dealing with a lot of chaos going into this whole idea of this abnormal. But the good news is we have a somewhat of an idea of what things are going to look like as we come out of this. We, we're not sure, but, but we can, we kind of know, we, we know there's some basic things that are going to be there. Um, we may not have the exact date or time we may not have the exact rule or regulation or guidance or, 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 or um, uh, uh, idea from our medical professionals, right? We may, there may be some things we don't think of. I was on a call the other day and, and, a, and a person said, well, are we required to provide uh, masks for our employees when they come back? And my response was, I don't care if you're required or not, provide them. You know, do you want to be on the uh, above the fold of the front page of the newspaper is the only company in town that refused to provide uh, masks and said to your employees, go out and find your own. Um, that's going to help your, your, uh, your recruiting strategy down the road. Are you kidding me? Buy the masks. And I, I was stunned that the question was even asked. I was absolutely stunned. Of course, you're going to, that's, we don't have to plan that. We're just going to do it, right? I'm going to get them ordered. I'm going to get them here. I don't know when we're going to get back to work. We kind of have an idea, but I'm telling you that plan could change. But I know that when I come back, I'm about 99% sure that they're either going to make us wear masks or we should wear masks or it's just a good idea. So just order them and get them in. Just get that one done. That, they're here. They're at the door. Boom, you got them. You're, that's one less thing you have to worry about. And, and you're taking that extra step. So there's a lot of things we can sit down and look at and put in our plan, understanding the plan might change. And sometimes a plan changes and it costs us some extra money or it costs us some extra time. 
So what we've been doing is working in the business, right? So just look out there and, and let's look a little bit at, at what's been going on. Uh, restaurants are a great example because we're all seeing it. And we're all dealing with it. Uh, grocery stores are another great example, right? Um, they really actually fit into this model very well. So what have they been doing? Well, you know, they've been stopping and they've gone, oh my gosh, we're shut down. And, and uh, they, they got a lot of guidance. So if you'll go into a restaurant now to, to get a, a carry out order, you see that the chairs are up on the tables and, you know, they've got things blocked off and you can't get very far in. And they're doing a lot of things to, to comply with the, the current rules. And what have they done? They, they're, they're right at the moment, they're in the business. They're all scrambling around. You know, everybody is putting up chairs. Everybody is doing this. Everybody's doing a lot of things just to survive, right? Just to, to be safe and to survive the current moment. People are spending an enormous amount of time trying to get grants from the government and loans and emergency loans. You know, we're, we're in the business, right? We're working currently in the business. Um, at some point, you need to get yourself where you're going to start working on the business or on your department. We've got to think about, okay, now we, we've, got, we've got all this stuff done. The restaurants now have a carryout business. Some of them have pivoted quite dramatically. I know one restaurant that, you know, carryout to them was really not a big part of their business. They didn't push for it. They're not, their food isn't kind of set up for that. Uh, if you're there and you're buying a meal and you say, I want a meal to go there, certainly have always been willing to, to help you. Now, guess what? It's, it's their only form of income, right? So what have they done? They've, they've modified the menu. They've got a carryout menu. Um, they've, they've purchased more carryout uh, items. They've set up some different uh, methods to, to make the carryout better. They're, they're pushing that piece of business now. Well, okay, fine. You're working in the business. You're working in the moment. We need to do that. But but let's be clear about something. When, when they can start having guests back in, are they going to want to say, oh, we don't want you to come in here and sit down because we're a carryout business now? Well, of course not. Now, they need to start thinking, okay, what might it look like based upon everything we're hearing here? Well, we're hearing about, um, you know, distancing. I probably can't have the same density uh, that I have currently when they let me open up. I'm probably going to have to have half the density or a quarter of it gee, I'll do a floor plan and start to fool around with that, what that might look like. I don't have the guidance yet. I'm pretty sure they're going to, I'm pretty sure they're not going to let me put, you know, go all the way back up to solid seating. You know, if I got a, a bar with 29 seats, I'm willing to bet money. They're not going to let me put 29 people at that bar. I, I'm just, I'm pretty certain that's not going to happen. So if I was a bar owner or a restaurant owner, I would start looking at that and going, okay, uh, I've got an idea. What would that look like? What might it look like? Then if they come out and they give that guidance, now I only have to change a minor part of my floor plan instead of invent the thing right from the beginning. Um, and the one thing the government's pretty good at is not giving us a ton of time to, to plan, you know. Um, unfortunately, I think that they should give us this guidance quicker, but they're not. And, and I get that. They're, it, things are going quick, so I'm not here to, to bash them. But but we have an idea what things might look like. I might have to have my, my wait staff wear masks. Okay, I better get them in, right? And, and even, if I, even if not, maybe they want to or, or whatever. But there's a lot of things we can kind of get our crystal ball out and say, you know, I, I'm going to guess we're going to be somewhat in that direction over there. So let me start to plan somewhat in that direction over there. And, and let me kind of see what that's going to look like. And then I'll make minor, more minor changes as I go. Um, the other part of the business we need to be working on is I want you to start thinking about a year from now as well. I want you to think about the next month to two months, right, for the transition. But I also want you to spend some time working about a year from now. And I, I, I want you to, to just say about, okay, the vaccine's here, the masks are gone, social distancing's gone. What's business going to look like, right? And when I ask that question, I don't want you to say it's going to look exactly like it did in January of this year, because then if, it, if that's what your answer is, you're probably going to miss a lot of great opportunities. And I mean a lot of great opportunities. Um, so I'll go to the restaurant example but you can certainly pull it into your own. And I'm, uh, uh, by the way, if you've got a comment or a question, 
there's a question and answer in the, in the comment box. You're certainly welcome to the chat box. You're certainly welcome to jump in there and, uh, and, and say something. I, I'd love to have some interaction here. It's fine. But I'll, I'll go to the restaurant as an example. They may end up, I don't know if they will, but they may end up with a very specific carry out menu for when they're back to normal. And they might push that a little bit. That may be some new business for them a year from now. That, that revenue goes up by five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10%. And they just never pushed it before. Sometimes, you know, we're forced into things and um, we need to say, all right, what am I going to do as a result of this? Um, I know a nonprofit that I'm on, they wouldn't have had a Zoom meeting for a board meeting if you held a gun to their head prior to this. I mean, you couldn't have forced them into it with, a, with an electric cattle prod for crying out loud. Well, guess what? We had one the other night and at the end they went, hey, this worked pretty well. And someone said, yeah, it did. I don't know that I want to do all of them this way. We said, no, but it would be nice to do maybe the ones in January and February when it's freezing cold and I don't really feel like driving out again and the weather could be really iffy and not, not safe. And maybe, maybe, we'll, do, maybe we'll, we'll utilize this um, face-to-face kind of meeting uh, three months out of the year instead of 12, you know? So we're, we already had that. That was just like a side conversation. Um, there's been a lot of uh, folks out there predicting, oh, there's going to be this huge work from home movement. I don't know there's going to be a huge work from home movement. I think people are fed up with working at home. I think people are going to be so glad to get back to work, they can't stand it. Um, I, I will tell you there will be an uptick. Certainly, there's been some folks that have said, hey, this does work. There's some businesses that say a portion of our, of our um, employees can work effectively remotely. So we're going to continue that, whether we have to or not. I, I think there'll be some changes. Uh, but but I, I, if I was in the commercial real estate business, I don't think I would be worried that all of a sudden, you know, all of my office space is going to uh, get shuttered and, and I'm going to have tumbleweeds coming through it because everybody's going to work from home. I don't see that happening. Is there going to be some shift? Sure. Um, th- there will be. Is it going to be massive? I don't know. I'm not a futurist. Uh, what percentage? I wouldn't begin to tell you. Do I think it's going to be over half the workforce? Oh, gosh, no. No, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, there'll be some. So, so will, that, will some of that work for you? Will some of the meetings that you're currently having in person, will this work better for some of them as we go forward? Very possibly. I know that I was talking to a financial planner just yesterday, and he was telling me that, you know, Ned, he said, um, we've got all, you know, when we take on a new client, there's a lot of paperwork to sign, so on and so forth. We've always had this, uh, some sort of a, digital signing uh, software program. He said, I never used it before. He goes, why? I want to see my customers in face. I think that's a huge part of what I do. I think it's a competitive advantage that I get to know them and I don't, I don't want that distancing. But he said, we couldn't do it any other way. And, and one of the people in our office said, use this and we got, we got it done and it worked very, very well. And he said, you know what? I may use that more even, even when things are back to normal. I won't use it all the time, but maybe if I'm having a cold, I'll say, you know, I have a cold and I don't want to infect you. So we'll do this and then I'll get out and visit you in the future face to face. Um, I I think that's really wise. So incorporate some of those things into your business. Um, I I think is absolutely, um, uh, you know, going to be, you're going to miss a ton of opportunity if you don't do that. So when we say that we're going to do this, there's really three steps to this. And and we've talked about it a little bit. Uh, Step work one is working in the business, right? So um, some of the things I've already talked about, we're we're dealing with all this stuff in the here and the now. um, And and we've got to figure out what is is the here and the now. So what is it? What, What do we do currently? Right now, this minute, what do we need to be working on? Um, employees would be the very first thing I would be thinking about. Um, and I, if you have an employee assistance plan, I would be pushing that to our employees like crazy. I've told all my clients, I want you to, to get on a meeting and I want you to go to your employees and say, do not forget we have an employee assistance plan. It is there for you to use and explain to them how it works and explain to them if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling 
frustrated, if you're feeling locked in, if you're feeling, if you're having any of those sorts of anxiety things that a lot of people are having right now, and, and understandably so, and you need somebody to talk to, this is a service that we provide and I want you to take advantage of it. I would talk about it weekly. I used to say talk about it quarterly. Right now, I'd probably step that up. Don't forget about the employee assistance plan. Don't forget about the EAP. Um, I would really be pushing that, um, that information. Clearly, you're gonna have to convert, con conserve cash. And again, I don't care if you're the business owner. I don't care if you're an employee. You've got to conserve cash. It's absolutely essential. Um, so you can do your part to conserve, uh, conserve cash. And, and, um, and I would absolutely be, be doing that as much as you possibly can. We're not sure how long we're gonna go. We, we think things are gonna move a little bit. We're also he hearing that we're probably gonna have another uptick in the fall, we could have a, a pretty big setback, right? Um, and I think that um, until we know, I think conserving cash is gonna be really important. And um, I'm certainly willing to talk about that, but basically here's what I say. If it's not absolutely essential to keep the lights on, I'm probably not spending the money right now. That, that's, a, that's a real quick, easy one. I know I went through for my business and I clicked off quite a lot of things that I really liked. They were very helpful. Um, and I don't have to have them. And so they're gone. They're gone. Um, deal with your banks, right? Everybody is dealing with the banks wherever you are. Deal with your banks, whether you're an individual and you've got to deal with your banks and, and to, to get some uh, payments extended out, those sorts of things. Get, get and deal with your banks. Now, let's bring it back to the business again. You absolutely need to be talking to your customers. Um, and and for, for the love of everything holy in the world, please please don't go to your customers and say, we're committed, we're there with you, we care. Everybody knows that and everybody's saying that. Um, here's something a little different to say. What can I do for you? Why don't you try that? What can I do for you? What is it that you need us to do for you right now? Uh, some of it you'll do for free because it, they're your customers and they've They've given you business for years and you're just going to help them out a little bit. And other things you're going to charge them for, and that's fine. But what can we do for you? So that, that would be the call I'd be making. I know I've been making it. Uh, checking in. How's it going? Is there anything I can do? Um, and, and, you know, there's been two things that have come out of that. A lot of appreciation from customers is one, and a little bit of business. And, and I, I'll be honest, I wasn't necessarily looking for the business. I mean, I am, but I'm not. Um, my intent is just to connect. What's going on? What do you need? Um, what can I help with? By the way, I'm doing these, you know, no charge uh, uh, webinars. You're free, free to, to log in, listen to them. Uh, I, I'm, I'm recording them and uh, you're going to have access to that as well. So um, uh, the bottom line is reach out to your customers and make sure that they know. And, and we've all heard it, right? We're committed, we care, we're by your side. All these quaint little things that everybody's saying. If that's the best you can do, then don't do anything at all. Um, get real with them and reach out to them. Do, do something of value or offer to do something of value. I would also reach out to your vendors. Uh, depending upon what business you're in, this could be critically important, right? Where is, <laughs> if, we have, if, you, if you haven't heard this term by now, you've not been paying attention, uh, what's the supply chain gonna look like? You know, where is your supply chain and what's it going to look like for whatever it is you're doing? Can I get what I need so I can, so I can now do for my customers what they've asked me to do? So I think that's another thing. Find out what's going on with your vendors. Some may be shut down, right? And if they're shut down, you need to know that. And, and you need to figure that out and you need to be on top of it. So what can you do? For, uh, what can your vendors do for you? All right, now let's go to step two, which is working on the business. And we talked about this just a little bit. And um, uh, so, so let's talk about working on the business. So we need to really have uh, two kind of uh, different transitions that we need to think about. Um, the first one is preparing for the transition back to normal. Um, what's that actually going to look like? Um, how will we do that? Um, so uh, I talked about a little bit of it earlier when I was talking about planning, right? Um, it might be that you only open partially. It might be that you're at a some reduced amount of, of work out there. It, it's clearly going to mean there's going to be all kinds of, of, of uh, safety measures that you've never dealt with before that you're going to have to think about. 
um, it's going to be a lot of more unknown. A lot of things are going to change. Why is that going to happen? Well, it's going to happen because the guidance comes out and says A, and then they learn something new and they shift that guidance to B. And, um, and we've got to understand that that's going to happen. So, <clears throat> so if, I, if I kind of figure that I'm going to transition back to normal and based upon what I know right now, um, and then my, again, as I said earlier, my change isn't as dramatic because they say, well, I've already, already kind of set up for that a little bit. Um, I've already got maybe what I need to make that happen. I'm just going to make it happen different now because the guidance has changed. So what's that transition going to look like? I don't think any of us know how long that's going to take. Right now, uh, what I'm hearing from the medical professionals is we can kind of uh, plan on a year. Uh, I'm looking at probably a year of some sort of uh, in-between time, I'll call it, this transition time back to normal. Um, every day, that's probably going to change, hopefully shorter, hopefully not longer. Um, but I think every day that's going to change because, again, they're going to find new things and, and um, uh, they're going to be able to give us new guidance. And, you know, I think everybody wakes up every morning going, I'm going to check my news feed to see if they've come up with the vaccine yet. So we can all run out and get shots and uh, we can throw the masks in the trash can, right? And we can just go back and doing what we were doing. I, I don't think anybody wishes something different than that. I don't think that's realistic, but I think it's a great thing to wish for. Um, but I would guess right now what we're hearing is a year, maybe a year and a half. I would certainly plan on my transition is going to probably take that long. Um, if it's shorter, great, right? Plan for the work, worst, hope for the best. So what's your transition to normal going to look like? Every business is going to be different, every last one of them. And so what we need to do is take a look at our business and say, based upon what I know right now, what can I do, right? If they, if they say I'm allowed to open the doors tomorrow, um, what do I think they're going to, what kind of restrictions do I think they're going to give me? Well, I don't know for sure, but I know what kind of restrictions everybody else has right at the moment. So I can't imagine my restrictions would be vastly different than that. There are going to be some form of that. So if that's a six feet rule or, you know, so, you know, a certain number of people in your building or, you know, something along those lines, I would start mapping that out today and say, okay, you know, what would this look like? I would also then start running some, some financials based upon that. You know, how much more is it going to cost me? How much less am I going to make? You know, how can I make this work? You know, might I need to open another day of the week to have more business come in? Might I need to change my hours to, you know, I don't know. But if you're, again, no plans equals chaos. I'd much rather have you have a plan that you change than no plan and then invent one as you're going. Because what you're doing at that point is, is if you're not preparing, you're the same chaos that we were coming into this, coming out of this. And, and we're going to look around, you trust me, you're going to look around and you're going to find a lot of organizations that have not planned for the transition back to normal. And, and they're gonna show themselves very, very quickly. You'll see that in a moment. One of the questions you need to be asking um, uh, through this process is, what are we gonna keep? And what I mean by that is, I'll go back and, and use my restaurant a little bit as an example. Um, are we gonna keep uh, the carryout? Uh, how can, how, the, you know what, geez, we've got this carryout business now that we never even thought we could have make anything on really. And it's not been bad. I mean, it certainly hasn't kept us alive, but gee, I'd like to not lose that carry out. That'd be great if I could hold on to that and open my business up. So how might we do that? Um, uh, what would that look like to us? Um, what's my capacity to deliver? You know, these are all questions we need to ask, but how might I go about doing that? Um, what pieces of this do we want to keep um, at, that, that will enhance my business going forward back into the new normal? Maybe some of it is just during the transition and maybe some of it is very long term. But this is the working on the business. This is just stepping back and saying, you know, what, what can be different? So I'll give you an example on my business. Um, clearly, you know, I have, we've done very little online training, very little online consulting. I've done some, but not a lot. Um, clearly, I'm not doing any in person. So what is that looking like currently? Well, you know, developing some online solutions right? I will be honest with you. Everything I'm developing, I'm trying to not develop it to only be something I'm going to use now. 
I'm developing it saying, okay, this can be an added solution for clients long term. Because you can spend a lot of money and time and effort working on the now, thinking the now is the new normal, and then the new normal comes back and you've missed all these other opportunities. You can't transition this into the normal, whatever it may be, because it was built for the temporary. So I, I'm not coming up with anything that I cannot use long term. Nothing. If I can't use it long term, I'm not building it. Um, so that I'm everything I'm doing now, I'm gonna try to keep most of it, at least from a delivery standpoint. Some of it I'll keep as far as I really liked as an example, instead of just a phone conference. I really liked uh, you know, having that phone conference be a video conference. And it's cheap and it's quick and people are learning how to do it and kind of liking that. So I'm gonna do a lot more of that. I won't do 100% of it, but that's some of that I think I'm gonna keep. I've already made a decision. You know, I think I'm gonna probably do a lot more of those. I get to look at the person I'm talking to um, and, and they look back at me and, and we can have, I think, a much richer conversation. So there's some of that I'm gonna keep. Here's the next question. What are you gonna stop? What are you currently doing just to keep the lights on, just to manage through this mess, right? What are you doing that you go, man, I cannot wait to stop doing that. That'll be awesome. And when I can stop doing that, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Now, why is that important? You say, not if I'm gonna stop doing it, why do I even think, why is it part of the plan necessarily? Why do I even uh, have that conversation? Well, um, because if you know that you're not gonna do that one thing full time forever, then you're going to manage the amount of time, effort, money, and resources you put into it to do it in the here and now, instead of building it out for the forever. And now you spend a lot of effort on something that you had no intention of keeping anyway. So I would, I would, I think this is a, as, as important to know as anything. What, what are you going to stop doing? What are you going to get rid of? This is absolutely critical that you go down this road and really figure out I'm not, I, I'm keeping this, I'm not doing that. It's just that simple. I'm keeping this and I'm not doing that. And, and you need to know what you're not going to keep as it is as important as what you are going to keep. And, and this is the time to know it because you, if you don't, it's one of those things, well, you know, uh, the old story of the little girl that says, mom, why do you cut the ham, the two ends off the ham before you bake it? She said, I don't know, your, your grandmother taught me. The little girl goes to the grandmother and she says, why do I, why do you cut the two ends off the ham before you bake it? She said, I don't know, your great grandmother told me. So she goes in the other room and she goes, great grandma, how come we cut the two ends off the ham before you bake it? She said, well, the reason I did it is because I had such a small stove, it wouldn't fit. I don't know why your grandmother and your mother do it. I can't figure it out. And, and I always get a crack up at that little story because that's a, a real great example of we've always done it that way. Well, we haven't. Yeah, maybe we have, but do we need to continue doing it that way? And, and if you don't understand what you're going to stop, you wind up with a lot of stuff you're doing and you don't really know why at some point. Why are we doing this? I don't know, because we've been doing it since, since the COVID, right? Well, you better understand what you're not going to be doing. So when the time is right, you can, you can say, nope, we're not doing that anymore. And you can take it off the list and say, that's not here. We're not doing it. So what are you going to keep? What are you going to stop, right? That's important. Here's the next one. What's going to be new? Um, again, you say, well, Ned, I don't know what's going to be new. I can't see into the future. You, I think you can see into the future more than you think you can if you allow yourself to see into the future, right? If you allow yourself to really say, all right, um, what do I think might be going on here? Um, there might be some folks in my business that work from home. Who might they be and how might we do that? And what might that look like? Now, again, I get it. You say, not I'm running around trying to keep the lights on right now. I understand that. I still will tell you that um, there needs to be some time for the, for the tomorrow. And if you're not spending time for the tomorrow, then the chaos that brought you into this is going to follow you out of this. And you're not going to be able to capitalize on some new opportunities. So I, I'll use myself as an example. Um, well, I can tell you one thing that's, or three things that are going to be new. I've got uh, somebody on my staff and we're, I've got them working almost full time. 
Um, and you know what they're working on? Three new products and, service and, and services that we are going to launch when we can get back to normal. And that may be, that may be eight to 10 to, month, to 12 months from now, but they are going to be ready to go. Everything's going to be locked and loaded. And these are things that have been on the back burner for a long time. And by golly, they're got moved to the front burner. Why? Because we're in the abnormal and I'm building for the normal again. And I'm going to do that. Now, there's some other things that are going to be new. Part of what we're building out, I'm actually going to take some of this online delivery and we're going to pepper it into it because we think that's going to strengthen it. And I'll be honest with you, I probably would not have done that when I was building it out in January. In fact, I'll, I'll promise you I would not have. And so we're going to actually pepper some of that into these new offerings. Not all of them, but some of them. So some of it, that, that is going to be very new. And I know that right now. I, I just, I know that's what we're going to do for a variety of reasons. So what are you going to keep during this transition to normal? What are you going to stop doing? And what's going to be new? And, and, and part of this is, a, is in the moment of the transition to normal. And part of it is going to be some really long-term things you're going to think about. Really long-term. Now, <laughs> here's where you really got to put your, your glasses on and start looking way out into the future, right? What opportunities are going to be there, right? Opportunities that, that you never, never thought about um, uh, uh, doing uh, ever. You, you never, that was never part of, of, of what your plans were. So what are going to be some of the opportunities that you can have moving forward that were never there before? Um, and I think you need to spend some time thinking about that. Now, some of that will come from now, and it's fairly easy to predict. I think some of it we need to put our hats on and say, okay, what's going to be new out front? This is where those conversations that you've had with your customers and with your vendors are going to be really critical. Um, what's going to change on the, their world that's going to necessitate a change on your world? And I'm talking to, really talking about this, this transition period and, 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 and moving forward. So what's really, um, uh, what's really out there that we can grab a hold of and, um, and, and understand <clears throat> that we are going to really get out there and get in front of this mess? And, and what are some of those opportunities? I don't care if you're a hospital. I don't care if you're a manufacturing company, if you're a car repair, if you're a hair salon, if you're a... a you know, a, a financial analyst, none of that matters to me. The, these questions fit and you should be asking these questions. What new opportunities do we really think are gonna be there? Anybody that's ever done strategic planning with me knows this is one of my favorite questions. What are some opportunities that might be coming down the road? And we better be paying attention to them. Because if we don't, we're gonna miss those opportunities. All right, now, <clears throat> We're really gonna look past the transition now, right? We've kind of started, have kind of brought you into that. Now we're really gonna uh, jump out there and, and get way ahead of this. Um, it, this is what I really want you to think about and start developing tomorrow. This is where I'm gonna kind of go back and I used some of those examples earlier. The restaurant who says I'm gonna, tomorrow is gonna include a, a, a separate carry out menu that we never had before. Tomorrow is gonna include outside dining that we never did. We, we've always had the space. We're going to do that because my customers are going to want to be outside for a while, partially because they've been in and partially because they're going to have, have that uh, feeling that it's safer. You know, it's, 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 they want to be outside because they can distance themselves more, even if they don't have to. Um, there, there's a lot of that that I think is going to be important. Um, I, again, I'm not a futurist, so I in no way, shape or form want to tell you that I know what's going to be happening. But you know what? I can absolutely, I can absolutely, <clears throat> pardon me, look out ahead and say, you know, there's a lot of this that I think might, might very well be going on. And um, uh, we need to be thinking long and hard about that. So you really need to think about developing tomorrow. Part of what we can do is what's on your project list that you can finish. <clears throat> I'm working full time on a project list right now. I'm, I'm, we are going full guns to say, I want these done. I want them up and operational. When can I sell them? I don't know. It may be a year from now, but guess what? When that year happens, we are hitting the ground running. 
And you know what? I'm going to be ahead of all of my competition out there because I'm going to already be talking to my customers and they're going to already be educated on what we're offering and the new, the new opportunities. And they're going to say, Ned, when we're back to business, I want that. And I'm going to say, well, when we're back to business, I'm going to be able to deliver that. So <clears throat> what do you have on your project list? I know one little restaurant, they, they went obviously to strictly a carry out. You know what they're doing? Now, again, they have the financial wherewithal to do it. They're doing um, uh, some uh, redecorating inside the restaurant. Good for them. When they open back up, it's going to be bright. It's going to be shiny. It's going to be new. They didn't have to close down during a time when they would have been making money to get it done. They didn't have to uh, upset their customers with having, you know, you know, uh, drywall. They're doing it now. Again, what things can we do to get finished? So when we're back, we're back and we can hit the ground running because that when you're back, isn't the time to be doing a project. When you're back, you're going to be trying to do all the business you can. So what can you get done now? And I would be all over that if I were you. You say, Ned, I'm not going to be able to use it for a year. I understand that, but year is coming. And there's two things I can promise you. One, that year is going to be here. And two, one of us will be ready to go and one of us won't. I want to be the guy ready to go. That's where I want to be. I've already talked about managing the here and the now and staying in business enough that I can get to tomorrow. Got to do that. But I want to be so far ahead of everybody else a year from now. It's not even funny. What's on your wish list that you can move up to your project list? Now, I'm going to be doing a whole nother uh, uh, episode just on the, the four lists I think everybody ought to have. But here's two of them. The project list and the wish list. So let me give you just a little uh, kind of a taster spoonful of what the difference is. A project list is something that uh, was approved, money was allocated for it. Uh, it, it, it had maybe an end date uh, that now you can accelerate. Uh, you are actively working on this. Um, a wish list is that thing that you sh every business should have. Frankly, everybody in every business should have it. I don't care who you are, uh, individual contributors, you should have this as well. <clears throat> and a wish list, here's how you make a wish list. As you're driving home from work, it could be at work too, but don't take it that literal. But as you have that windshield time and this goes through your head and you say, I sure wish we had fill in the blank that goes on the list. Or, or it might sound like this. <clears throat> it would be nice if we had, or we could do fill in the blank goes on the list. That's your wish list. Every coaching client I have has to have a wish list. Every last one of them. Because if you're a department head, let's say you're a, no, let's say you're in charge of HR for your department. When your boss says, what's your vision for the HR department? Guess what? That's a really hard question to answer. It's not a hard question anymore. <clears throat> well, my vision is, and you go down your wish list with your boss. That's, that, that now becomes a vision for your department. I think everybody should have that. I don't care if you don't have a department, you got your own job, still wish you had some things. What, what would you like to see new in your job tomorrow? Well, here's my wish list. So uh, I'll get into that in more detail when I do uh, the episode just on lists, but this is one I think you ought to have. So look at your wish list and say, well, what maybe I can move up to a project. Maybe I can take that wish list and, and we're just going to do it now. <clears throat> um, if you, I wish I had the time to, right? Fill in the blank. Well, guess what you have now? In, in many cases, you got a lot of time. So go ahead and do it. Um, you know, it's really interesting. I was talking to someone the other day on a call and they said, uh, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've, I've just got this uh, a payroll protection plan loan. The problem is I don't think for my employees to do. And I was like, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. I said, do you have a project list? No. Do you have a wish list? No. Well, if you did, guess what? You'd have plenty for them to do. So I, <clears throat> I got the guy offline and I had him work up a project and a wish list. And uh, this was about a week and a half ago. And he sent me a quick little note and he goes, I got plenty for him to do now. I said, there you go. There you go. So, you know, let's take a hard look at that and start really planning for tomorrow and make sure that that's going to happen. Um, what looks temporary that should be permanent, right? Some of the things, and I talked about this already, but it's time now to think about a little different. Again, we're thinking a year down the road, right? <clears throat> um, what, what is temporary that could be permanent in our business? And I've given some examples. 
you might have more online meetings. You might have a to-go menu that you never had before. You might have, you might run some things different. You might have learned that you can run your business with some different hours uh, that you thought were temporary just to, to have social distancing. And guess what? Um, it's working just fine. We can, we, can, we can do it this way. In fact, the employees like it. So we're going to keep some of that. So there are some th temporary things that might, you might want to keep as, as permanent. <laughs> this goes back to that other one, right? <clears throat> what looks permanent that should be temporary? Trust me, if I, if, trust me when I tell you, if you, keep, can, if you continue to say this is the new normal, everything's going to look permanent and you're not going to get rid of much of it, right? If you say this is the new abnormal and we're looking back, we're looking for the new normal again, then a lot of things that look permanent will, will be temporary and you actually will get rid of them. And I think that is absolutely critical. So this is, this is the top of the list. All right. So I want to bring a conclusion to this episode and then I'm going to give you a little primer of what we're going to talk about in the next two. Okay. Um, without a plan, there's no change, just chaos. Um, that, I, I'm, that, that's me. I said that. That's mine. I love it. Um, Eisenhower said, uh, the, the plans are not important. Planning is everything. So if you don't have a plan, you don't have any change. You just have chaos. And we didn't have it. We had chaos. We had to have a plan coming into this mess. We absolutely can have a plan coming out of it. And I'm, I'm really adamant about this. So what are we going to talk about in the next two episodes? Two different things that are going to help you with some of that. Um, we're going to walk you through a growth risk matrix. Um, and, and we're going to actually, uh, uh, use a couple of uh, current examples about how to use this. So um, the real simple uh, piece to this is uh, you have existing products, existing customers. There's no risk to, to um, increasing your sales there. Uh, we increase our risk uh, slightly by uh, the existing products to new customers. We increase slightly more when we uh, have new products to existing customers. And then the, the largest uh, risk out there in a, is what we call diversification, where we have all new products and all new customers. <clears throat> so um, uh, we're going to kind of peel that apart. I'm going to get into some detail. I'll really walk you through um, uh, these uh, uh, items that are on there and, and let you do some of it. We're also going to do uh, a SWOT analysis with you, and that'll be uh, pretty in-depth, which we're going to do on the, the third um, the third uh, of the, the, the series. Th these are absolutely critical to do. Um, so <clears throat> I can't thank you all enough to be here. If there's any comments, questions um, <clears throat> that you'd like to type in, I'd be glad to answer them. Um, I want to respect everybody's time. I said be an hour. We're uh, done just a few minutes before that, which is great. Give you some of your day back. Uh, I will be, uh, we have recorded this and we will be putting this uh, out on YouTube. Um, and we'll uh, get you the, um, we will get you the uh, link to that when it's up. We got to do a little editing and then put it up. It takes about a day, but they'll be up there. They're free. You're welcome to listen to it again. You are certainly welcome to share this with anybody you like. That is fine. Um, and uh, um, uh, we're, we're delighted to have you. Um, again, uh, we'll be pushing the next two in social media. You saw the dates. Share those with anybody you like. We, we don't have a, a space problem here. We're delighted to have anybody um, on these that wants to be on these. And if they miss this one, they can certainly listen to it and then catch up. So uh, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it. We're going to call it a day. Um, thanks, Alan. Good to see you too, my friend. I'm glad you're here. I see a lot of other uh, uh, names on here of some dear friends of mine and, and folks that I've known and, and some folks that I don't know. So it's, it's great, to, great to have you. Um, if there's uh, nothing else, we'll uh, call this a wrap and uh, um, uh, we'll take it from there and see you on the next time. Take care.